Hi guys, welcome back to Willy Beard Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Power Rangers issue and number two, written by Ryan Parrott with art by Francesco Moratorino. Now this issue is absolutely fantastic. It is kind of a almost bottle issue where everything that happens takes place within the ship and it is very much an alien style um, horror show. Alien being uh, the movie for Ridley Scott with Sigourney Weaver and everything like that. So in this issue, some aliens get on board the ship, they turn off the power and they are really really frightening we learn over the course of the issue that they are multi-phasic and quantum locked and just you know throwing a bunch of you know doctor who star trek science fiction words at it basically what it means is they can walk through walls and sometimes they're hard to track on the ship but that's basically what the techno babble amounts to and they're almost vampiric like they're wanting to um take life for some um, and things like that so uh, all in all it is a fantastic like like i said bottle episode or bottle issue since it's a comic and it's a fantastic space horror stuff with some really great uh, imagery from our artists there. There's a couple panels I really want to point out because I absolutely love them. So that's kind of what takes place within this issue. But I like what it says or what this issue kind of says about the larger goings on here in, in uh, this new series of Power Rangers. One, um, Z and Jason are talking at the beginning about Jason's leadership style, what they've got going on right now, and have they essentially bitten off more than they can chew. They're out there on their own. They don't have a Zordon to lead them. Z knows some things about the galaxy, but he is obviously not as knowledgeable as Zordon uh, is, and they're taking some of their cues from Draken, and he may have already led them astray just right here in issue two, but as we see at the end of this issue, he may have also um, maybe stepped in it a little bit, so I really like what we're doing with these characters. They're out there on their own. They don't have their usual Power Ranger uh, support system. They don't have Zordon. They don't have the Blue Emissary, uh, who they were talking with um, back in the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger um, series. Um, so I really, really like what they're doing with this. We don't really have much uh, talk of the Imperials, um, which are going to be our main villain for this, but that's fine. We're getting our we're getting our character base. We're learning the dynamic uh, between our three Rangers and Draken and Z and our uh, and the dog uh, on the on the ship. I don't know if the dog has a name yet. I can't remember, but really enjoying this series thus far. I'm glad we're kind of slow rolling into uh, our Imperials um, and their um, storyline because if we just kind of, you know, popped it right out of there, that doesn't leave the story any headroom to go. So I like this one because we're learning about our characters, how they interact, and all of that fun stuff there. So let's go ahead here and dive into the issue, point out all of that fun stuff that uh, I was talking about earlier. So um, here... Uh, it's kind of the, the aftermath of everything that's going on. We have some narration here from Lord Drac, and he says, The universe is an endless sea of possibility, both beautiful and terrifying. That uh, To forget that is to incur its wrath. That almost reminds me of like old sailor talk. It's like the minute you disrespect the sea, she'll remind you why you need to respect her, something like that. Uh, he's basically saying the same thing about space. Uh, to be reminded of just how small and alone we truly are, to tremble in its magnificence so forgive me i take no pleasure in what i've done i am a creature of necessity and we must and uh and we must all do what we can to survive now dragon really doesn't have a whole lot um to do with what happens in this issue um he tries to use it for his favor um near the end because of course he does but it is very clear he is not in control of of this situation and so uh this is one of those panels that i was talking about this uh opening splash page here with just uh, Jason with that sword kind of drawn across his body, and I love seeing uh, the reflection of those sinister glowing eyes in in the blade there, and you can tell he is worse for the wear, he doesn't have the helmet on, uh, he's got some scratch marks, looks like on his face, he's bleeding from his forehead, so you know things have gotten real here on the Spectrum too. So we uh, back up six hours earlier, and this is where we start to get some of those uh, leadership and direction conversations between Z and Jason that, that I love uh, so much. Jason asks how long until they get where they're going, and Z says, hard to say, at least 12, but Draken's flight path takes us through several precarious areas of deep space. So already Draken is maybe leading them astray. It's like, yeah, you know what? Take that shortcut through the bad neighborhood. Nothing bad will happen. You know, there's not space vampires in that nebula or anything like that. 
nothing to worry about. It's just all main highways the whole way there. Uh, Jason says, I guess we'll just have to keep our eyes open. We wouldn't want this to get too easy. I think you're going to choke on those words a little bit there, Jason. And this is where I love what Z says right here. Uh, says, no, you made sure of that when you stole Draken and turned us into intergalactic outlaws. Uh, which I love that line there because it uh, reestablishes something or reiterates something that we saw in Mighty Morphin issue 2 from last week or the week before. I can't remember where Zordon had Billy and Alpha send out a message to all of their allies in the galaxy and says, you catch the Omega Rangers and you send them home to me because I'm going to strip them of their powers. Zordon is is pissed and so now they have literally no ground to go to they are out there on their own I said they don't have any support system that doesn't just mean the people that they had back on earth they don't have anyone else in the galaxy they have effectively burned all of those bridges at this point which is a fantastic way of um, isolating uh, these characters and uh, Jason says, we've been over this. Um, he's a valuable resource. And then Zeke cuts him off and says, I don't question the logic, Jason, only the execution. Your leadership took us to Earth for guidance. Instead, Zordon is now calling in every favor he has to track us down. Oh, I love that. And I think I'm really going to love the character uh, of Z as we get more and more uh, deeper into this. Just seeing there, he's almost like a second in command, really. Um, and he's a little bit more wizened, a little bit more um, experienced experienced out here in space and I think Jason uh, I hope Jason is going to learn to to lean on that um, as as this story goes on he continues on and says, What we suggest we do then, uh, run back to Safe Haven and pray the Imperials just go away on their own. And he says, Is that any more ridiculous than letting a homicidal maniac get us around, uh, lead us around by the, gal or the galaxy by the nose? Oof, rough, rough words there. Um, he said, Then Jason says, The emissary chose me for a reason. You may not like it, just trying to back himself up, saying, Look, I was chosen. And Z is like, Uh uh, nah, the blue emissary was not a god, Jason. He made his. His share of mistakes. Oh, I love that. Just this back and forth between them definitely reminds me of, I'm, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, so this reminds me of a lot of conversations between the ship's captain and the, the ship's number one, whether that was, you know, Kirk and Spock or Picard and Riker, uh, Cisco and Kira Norris, um, Chakotay and, and Janeway, all of those uh, dynamics. I can really feel that right here, just talking about leadership style and things like that. So conversations that Jason really can't have with one of the other uh, two rangers on board because I, I would think that they were each too close to it and would probably treat him more as a friend versus a leader in, in some of those conversations. So I really love the dynamic that we're establishing uh, between these two right here. And I don't think I remember seeing this dynamic in, in the previous Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series, but I really love um, what's going on there. So uh, they finish that conversation and then we have another great character interaction here. Uh, Trini is taking Draken to his cell and he immediately immediately starts to manipulate them she says um or he says you know uh you amaze me Trini you really do and she's like oh I'm not in a mood for your mind games right now and he says no no I mean it with everything you've seen you're still a truly kind and caring soul unlike the rest of your companions so immediately trying to uh, um, endear her uh, or dear himself to her and kind of try and dissuade her from you know being friends with, with the others uh, tell me you truly prepare to uh, tell me are you truly prepared to watch more planets burn to lose friends and family and stand by as innocents suffer because that's what's going to happen if you let Jason Zack and that robotic spider of yours make decisions you should be calling the shots Trini ah this is that good old devil whispering in your ears like no you should be the one in charge you should be it and thankfully Trini sees right through the little shit uh, uh, that it is she says here um, uh, uh, do I have the word idiot stamped across my forehead you tried to murder me and my friends that's not something I'm going to forget so the sooner you realize we're in this together and stop trying to manipulate us the better off we will all be immediately I love it shuts it right right down uh, I would th I think the only character that might suffer a little bit in this first issue might 
might be Zach, um, at least right here in these initial conversations. He's really just playing uh, some basketball or something to, to that effect in the ship. And uh, the cat or the dog, he calls it a dog later on, good doggy. I have no idea what species of the scent. I would uh, feel that it's more akin to a cat, <laughs> but the cat busts his, uh, bust his ball there. Actually, the, this uh, creature reminds me of one of the cats in uh, the Coliseum scene in uh, Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. That's what I see uh, when I'm there. But as they're having that fun interaction, the uh, the power goes out, and they're like, what's going on? And they say uh, it's down all over the ship. Our main power cells are being are draining. The engines are unresponsive, and we're losing terminal velocity. We are adrift in space. Oh, that's never good. Like, right after you kidnap, like, a homicidal uh, um, a dictator in the, in the form of Draken. Uh, so they basically say, look, we can turn it back on if we get our all of our auxiliary power cells from around the ship so of course they split up to go do that and now they don't know that they're in a space horror but we can tell they're in a space horror and the one thing you don't do in a horror is don't split up if that's uh i don't know if that was explicitly one of the rules that um jamie kennedy talked about in the scream franchise but it should have been i know it was uh never say uh, i'll be right back because you won't be but i do love that they're splitting off here and they're all going off on their own and that's when things get really really hinky um so, uh, Jason hears something, uh, or, I'm sorry, Zach hears something little s s in the background. He's like, um, what was that? What's going on here again? I love we're just leaning into uh, those horror tropes. Um, something I do want to um, mention here, she says, um, as Trini's trying to pull um, the power battery, whatever it is, out of there, she says, I'm looking at some massive corrosive scarring on the main conduit lines. Now, I believe this is a brand new ship. I think they're, uh, this is the Spectrum 2. I think the original Spectrum was destroyed when they fought the Imperials or damaged beyond repair. So this should be a brand new ship. Corrosion shouldn't be there. So I think We'll um, learn here in a minute why that is. And here we go. We get our first look at our new bad guys. Uh, later on, they are dubbed the Horrid, which that's a, that's a pretty apt name for them. And they are very much um, like space vampires here. They're trying to, uh, he says here, I can smell your life delicious. And Trini's like, um, no. I'm not having this, she says. Rangers, we've got an intruder, uh, uh, level uh, 7 quarter B. How did you get in this ship? Identify yourself right now. And they just say, we've come to feast. And I do love this from Trini. She says, seal off the level. Like, don't, don't even like wait till I get out of here. Just immediately, selflessly, just shut it down. Like, we can't let them get out of here. Uh, so the same thing happens with Jason here. He runs right into some of the others. And then over here, they definitely have some sort of corrosive property to them. Uh, as Jason um, starts fighting them, they get their hands on his helmet. And you can literally see it start to melt right here. I don't know if my camera is good enough uh, for you guys to, to see that. But they literally start like burning right through his Power Ranger helmet. You can see his hair um, poking out in some of these other panels right here. So yeah, they're... Like, like eating through the lines and the metal uh, on the ship. So Z, uh, Jason keeps running, trying to uh, get away from them. This is where uh, Z says uh, their readings keep shifting. These creatures seem to be in a state of quantum flux. I think I may have said quantum lock earlier. They're in quantum flux. I think uh, the weeping angels from Doctor Who are quantum locked. These are in quantum flux. Very, very different. I have no idea how they're different, but I don't. I knew. I do know um, that they're different. So uh, here down here. You can see that they are phasing through the bulkheads and stuff um, here. This is another panel that I really wanted to point out. I love uh, this one right here. So Zach is kind of like hiding underneath the floorboards or inside the walls, um, just trying to get away. But you can see all these wires and stuff over him. And I love the shadows from the floor grating just playing across his, uh, his mask there. And then you can see um, his eye kind of through the visor mask there. Just absolutely fantastic stuff. And so he jumps out and it starts throwing around his weapons. I'm sorry, I don't know what that weapon is called. Um, if there's a traditional uh, name for it, I'm sure someone out there knows what it is, and they'll let me know uh, down in the comments. And then he's in trouble, but that's when whatever this creature is, I don't know if it has a name yet or not, uh, steps in and saves him, and that's when he says, good doggy. And I, I like that they're they're getting along. They may have had a, a, a rocky start, but uh, they're getting it. 
Um, love this scene right here. Uh, Trini figures out that they're multiphasic, and so she takes her big old hemma and throws it uh, against the bulkhead, blows out a piece of it so they all get blown into space, and then she, here in a minute, will, I think, make her way uh, back to the ship. Actually, was she still floating in space um, in that opening page? I can't remember. I thought she made it back to the ship, but I could be wrong. Nope, she is still floating in space uh, in our in our uh, where we started out there. So she's still out there in space, but I presume that the Ranger suits are um, are airtight. That's what that would be my presumption. So here on the next page, this is when uh, the Horrid, and that's where they get named, go see Draken. And now Draken has no idea what's going on. He says, excuse me, friends, uh, I'm not entirely sure what you've run into, but if you let me out of here, I love to try and help. Z, Chi, whatever your name is, hello. And then the Horrid are like, I can smell your life. Uh, and my children want to taste, and he's like, um, well, I'm rather partial to my life, but maybe if we got to know each other, who are you, and what do you want? And they say, we are the horrid, and we are hungry. Um, grab a Snickers, you know, if you're hungry. You're not usually yourself when you're hungry. Anyway, <laughs> moving on here, um, they love this. They say, your spirit tastes of sorrow, but your will is delicious. And I was like, oh, that's, uh, that's pretty creepy there, so... Um, immediately kind of, uh, uh, Draken kind of takes charge of the situation and immediately falls into that manipulative, manipulative nature of his. He says, please, I'm on your side. Um, if it's life you want, I can get you more. And they're like, wait a minute, explain. And he says, spare me, oh mighty horrid king, and I will give you your planets, galaxies, and even universes bursting with life. This could be the beginning of of a beautiful partnership so again immediately starts to try and weasel his way out of whatever he's gotten into uh but the horrid really kind of aren't happening and they say um feed us now and he says of course uh, i can think of several places um that we that we could go and they cut him off and they say you will give us those who have hurt my children their life will give us strength then you will give us all you have promised this ship is now our home and you are now our servant so just like the rangers have bitten off more than they can uh, possibly chew. I think uh, Draken has kind of gotten himself into the crap a little bit as well. And I'm going to guess that with our next issue, um, our three rangers here plus C are going to have to uh, agree to, uh, or kind of the enemy of my enemy is my friend situation with Draken. Uh, they're all in this together, so they're going to have to team up and maybe reconcile their differences a little bit or call a temporary truce so they can get out of their situation which will lead our character development to maybe Draken becoming the fourth um, Omega Ranger taking up that spot that Kira left behind in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So guys those are my thoughts on Power Rangers issue 2. Uh, I am absolutely loving this series. I'm also loving the Mighty Morphin a series going on right now. Power Rangers is in amazing hands with Boom Studios, and I cannot wait to continue to read through these and talk about them with you guys. So guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions on these issues down in the comments down below like you guys always do. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and what we do here at the channel, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button for me. It would absolutely mean a lot. Also, if you'd like to support the channel in the description box down below, there are a few ways of doing that if you feel so inclined. Guys, once again, thank you so much for watching and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop